Listening to how Bernard Ingham and Tony Benn related to the oil companies, I can begin to understand their views of big business. I've discovered all government's dealings with the big oil companies come down to the same thing. How much tax can governments get from them? I mean, the idea of an industry, which was quite common, if you said, look, we've got lots of reserves in the future, the immediate response of government would be to stick taxation up. Uh, so there was a kind of, kind of incentive for the, the big companies in particular to underplay the significance of the province. This makes it harder to get to grips with how much oil there is. But when I realise how much tax the government gets from this industry, maybe it's not surprising that the companies always opt for the conservative estimate. The black gold that's poured out of the North Sea has pumped billions into the Treasury's coffers. It starts with the licence companies have to buy to find the oil. They can cost anything from a few thousand pounds to a few million. Then there's a tax. Since 1968, the oil companies have paid more than £230 billion in today's money on the oil they've extracted. First, there's corporation tax, which this year will be about £4.8 billion. Then there's a supplementary charge, a tax by another name. For the last 12 months, it adds up to £3.4 billion. It doesn't stop there. Some oil fields have an extra petroleum revenue tax charged on them. This year, that'll be another £1.7 billion. Oh, and all that's paid just to get the oil ashore. The taxation process starts again when the crude is refined to produce petrol, diesel or kerosene, with fuel duty and VAT. That brings in roughly £30 billion a year. For every one pound you spend at the pumps, 65p goes on tax, making you, the British motorist, the most highly taxed in Europe. We're all struggling with expensive fuel at the minute, but despite the price of crude oil, it's still cheaper per litre than a litre of bottled water. North Sea oil has boosted the government's bank balance, but oil reserves have even had a hand in deciding the fates of governments. Remember Britain's troubles in the 70s, the strikes, the crippling OPEC prices? Britain was so broke, it had to go to the world's banker, the International Monetary Fund, or the IMF, for a loan. We had some economic problems in 1976, a year after the oil came ashore. We had this big row with the IMF. They wanted to make massive cuts. And I said to the Treasury, instead of publishing the gold and dollar reserves every month, why don't you publish the gold, dollar and oil reserves every month? Because if the world knew what we knew, the amount of oil that was available, then they would be less likely to try and bully us to make cuts. And of course, the IMF cuts went through. I was opposed to it, but they went through. Ben realised oil had the potential to change the course of a country, but he wasn't able to get his way. The IMF loan had its price, spending cuts, and the impact of those cuts sent shockwaves through Britain. They went through, uh, triggered off the winter discontent, and uh, Mrs Thatcher won the election. I think it all flowed from that. And on the whole, the Treasury was reluctant to recognise the wealth that was there because they wanted to use the crisis to force cuts on a Labour government. I think that's my interpretation of what's happening anyway. Oil shapes economies. Oil decides the political direction of countries. And according to Tony Benn, how Labour handled North Sea oil was indirectly responsible for Thatcherism. And oil played a crucial role throughout the Thatcher years. The taxes became big from about 1980 onwards. The tax revenues um, re reached in 1984 in money of the day, uh, 12 billion pounds. We were talking, no, what, maybe 24 uh, at, at today's prices. So there was a huge influx uh, of, of, of money to the uh, exchequer and the balance of payments was transformed such that sterling, which uh, in the 70s and of course had a very difficult time with devaluations and so on, uh, became a remarkably strong currency 
uh, uh, and uh, that, that of course caused other problems because our exporters of manufactured goods kept complaining about oil uh, as being one of the causes of, of the strong pound. The revenue from the North Sea allowed Margaret Thatcher to reverse the economic policies of the 70s. She believed in the free market, so she even sold off Britain's national oil company. Britain was awash with oil money. There are many people could argue that uh, in the grand manner of governments, they chucked it around and threw it away. But the fact is that North Sea Oil did help to restructure the British economy. The British economy is nothing like what it was in 1974-75, when, when oil began to come ashore. Nothing like it was, and therefore that money, you could argue, was used to restructure the British economy, on which we have lived quite well for a number of years now. I think you could also argue that it was used to refurbish Britain. Britain was looking pretty shabby in the mid-70s. It looks much better now if you disregard the litter that we're knee-deep in. Uh, but I think the fabric of Britain has been greatly improved since then. The money from the oil off Scotland's coast bankrolled Thatcherism. Once again, understanding oil allows us to understand a major economic phenomenon in Scotland's modern history. The person who got the maximum proceeds out of oil and gas it was Margaret Thatcher. Uh, and, I mean, if you like, the oil and gas revenues were, 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 were used to bankroll monetarism. I mean, the monetarist experiment in the uh, UK economy, whether you like it or hate it, could never have happened at all without the you know, 12, 14, 16 billion pounds uh, which were flowing in at that time, a fairly substantial proportion of UK's overall revenues. Interestingly enough, oil revenues are now back at that sort of nominal level, but of course it's a much smaller proportion of the UK's revenue base. Margaret Thatcher used that money to restructure the economy. But in Scotland, not everyone agreed with the way she spent the North Sea oil revenues. What I did very much regret was that the way things turned out, the oil revenues ended up financing unemployment to quite a large extent in the early 1980s. Because we then had a very serious recession and uh, the pound is very high, companies were collapsing and effectively the oil was financing unemployment and that was not at all what should have happened. <laughs>